This video will focus on the identification as well as edible and ethnopharmacological history and applications of the southern magnolia tree, Magnolia grandiflora. The southern magnolia is a striking and iconic tree known for its large, glossy leaves, fragrant white flowers, and distinctive cones and red berries. It is native to the southeastern United States, primarily in the Gulf and Atlantic coastal regions, and is found in a variety of habitats, including lowland forests, swamps, wetlands, and along riverbanks. It is often planted as an ornamental tree in urban and suburban landscapes in areas beyond its native range. As for its identification, let's start with its leaves. The southern magnolia leaves are evergreen, meaning they stay on the tree year-round. They are large, leathery, and glossy, with an elliptical or oval shape. They have a dark green color on the upper surface, with a lighter, often rusty brown color on the underside. And the leaf edges are smooth or slightly wavy, with prominent venation. Next, its flowers. The flowers of Southern Magnolia are one of its most distinctive features. They are large, fragrant, and white, with a diameter of around 8 to 12 inches, or 20 to 30 centimeters. The flowers have a waxy texture and a bowl-like shape, with 6 or 12 thick petals. The center of the flower has a cone-like structure made up of many small, tightly packed pistils. The fruit of the Southern Magnolia is a cone-like structure that turns from green to reddish-brown or dark brown when mature. It contains numerous seeds covered by a layer of red fleshy pulp. The fruit cones are quite distinctive and can stay on the tree for an extended period of time. Now onto its bark. The bark of mature southern magnolia trees ranges from dark gray to brown. It boasts a smooth texture during its early stages of growth, developing distinctive irregular furrows and ridges as it matures. As for its growth habit, the southern magnolia trees are typically large and have a pyramidal or conical shape when young, gradually becoming more rounded as they mature. They can reach heights of 60 to 80 feet, 18 to 24 meters, or more, and the tree's branches tend to spread horizontally, forming a dense and broad canopy. Now on to its uses. The southern magnolia has a variety of ethnobotanical uses, each unveiling an intricate web of cultural and practical connections within indigenous communities, providing a profound glimpse into the tree's cherished role throughout history. First, its edible uses. The leaves of the southern magnolia make for a wonderful bay leaf substitute in flavoring dishes, and the flowers can be made into a perfume or even used as a garnish for salads. But the leaves and the flowers are strong in flavor, so it's best to start with smaller amounts while becoming more acquainted with their tastes. Additionally, they both make for rather distinctive teas. On to its medicinal ethnopharmacology, the southern magnolia has been traditionally used by various Native American tribes for a multitude of purposes. The Choctaw people would blow down the bark and use the decoction as a bath or wash to relieve itching caused by prickly heat, also known as heat rash or miliaria, which occurs when sweat becomes trapped in sweat ducts, leading to inflammation and irritation of the skin. The Choctaw also employed Magnolia grandiflora as a kidney aid, using an infusion made from the mashed bark in a steam bath to provide relief for dropsy, a condition characterized by swelling due to excess fluid retention. And the Kasati people used Magnolia grandiflora as a dermatological aid, crafting a decoction with its bark, which they would use as a wash for treating sores. These multifaceted applications showcase the extensive versatility of the Southern Magnolia within the rich tapestry of traditional Native American culture, illuminating the deep ethnobotanical significance that the tree and its many qualities holds within indigenous communities and potentially for you.